we want to graph y equals x minus sine of x. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that this would be the same thing as saying y equals x and y equals minus the sine of x. So that's one way that you could think about it. Um, what else do we know about sine of x and maybe negative sine of x? Well, I know that if I have the sine of x, it's going to oscillate, right? It's going to stay in between minus 1 and 1. And if I have negative sine of x, well, that also oscillates, but now it's been flipped over, so it's also going to oscillate between negative 1 and 1. But remember, the key here is that it's flipped. So we have that information. Now, how is that going to help us? Well, one way to think about it is that we know that if we have y equals x, let's just kind of draw an imaginary little line that goes through y equals x. So it goes right through the origin. And that means that your slope is 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, or down 1 to the left 1, whichever way you want to look at it. So to give us a good idea, why don't we do a table of values? Remember that always works. That's something you can always do. And it helps you so that you can understand how and why we get the values that we get. So for x, let's do 0, pi over 2, and how about pi? So if I do that, if I put 0 into the equation, I'm still going to get 0. And if I put in pi over 2, I get pi over 2 minus 1. And if I put in pi, I get pi. So if I actually am going to graph that, you will notice that it's going to oscillate around this y equals x. So it kind of comes up, it goes like this, like this. I have a harder time when I go the other way, but it goes like this, like this. So the actual graph for y equals x minus the sine of x is, it's been turned, and so it's going around the y equals x imaginary line, and it's going to do the same oscillating pattern. What I always recommend, remember, is that you have your points labeled and that you check it on a graphing utility of some kind.